Chad uh, in a shop. I'm going to do a quick little video of doing a swing out door bar kit on a 70 Chevelle. Um, I'm going to give a little insight of what I'm going to use to do it, uh, what I've learned uh, from doing several of these. This particular car has got an X bar kit in it, so it's going to be a little more involved, but the guy wants to get rid of the X bars because this is mostly a street car. Um, yeah, it makes over a thousand horsepower easily, but he drives on the street way more than he does on the track. Um, we are going to cut the bars out of this thing. We're going to get everything prepared. I'm going to show you how to, or how I prepare everything uh, on a show car like this to keep from messing things up and also keep from doing a whole lot of extra work. Um, taking things out of it and things like that. Um, we are probably going to find better ways to do things as, as we go to the other side. Uh, but for now, this is what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to show the welders I use. Um, you may or might not have those. Um, they're not the best, but they're not the worst. It's just what I use and what I get by with and what turns out good results for me. Uh, I don't want to make a long video because I don't like watching long videos on YouTube. I just want to get to the point uh, and see how all this turns out. As far as the welders go, um, we use the Hobart MIG welder, which we probably won't use that in this video uh, on this car. Even though this is a mild steel cage, I'm going to I'm going to bounce over here and probably use my prime weld 225x which is an amazing welder for the for the money that we got in this thing um 825 dollars and i would compare it with anything that i've ever used um we're going to use a fupa 12 cup uh probably tig weld everything just to make it look better and also you know when you're doing cars like this you know it's full interior car. If you can TIG weld, TIG weld the thing to keep it from splattering. Um, you don't want splattering and burn holes in your seats because no matter how much you protect things like this, uh, they're very, very likely to get splatter if you're MIG welding. Uh, if, if you only have a MIG welder, I'd highly suggest pulling the seats completely out of, completely out of it, uh, completely covering the headliner with, uh, a good blanket like this right here, which we're gonna do anyway for grinding and stuff. Uh, I'm gonna use this Sawzall to cut those X bars out. I'm gonna use old cheap Harbor Freight grinder with a, a good flat wheel on there to clean those w existing welds up after we cut those off. Um, as you can see, I mean, it's got a beautiful roll cage in it. Um, so we're gonna try to at least match the quality of work that's in this car right now. We're gonna, I'm going to cut it, you know, here and leave a little stub going to here. I'm going to cut it here, leave a little stub going to here. And this one right here, we're just going to cut that thing as close as we can. And we're going to cut this one down here as close as we can. And I'm going to get that flat wheel. And we're going to grind that thing down to where it looks like it never had a pop on it. A lot of sparks, a lot of grinding. You need plenty of coverage. Um, I can't do this stuff one-handed, uh, so I'm going to put the phone down and put these GoPros up in a minute and kind of do a some sort of a video on how to get all this done. This is pretty much what I got done. Um, you see my blanket up there. Uh, you see I got the masking tape here. I mean, I'm not using it to square anything up or anything like that. I'm going to square it up the best I can with Sawzall and end up shaping that square with a grinder, I'm sure. I got one there by your shoulder bar, one here by your toes. Um, and I'm going to have to cut in here. And here, they're going to have to be flush. Uh, grind them all flush as I can. Uh, and this is the swing out door bar kit. Uh, don't get the cheap crap that you can get off of Summit. Get you good, solid billet kit. You'll be so much happier. You know, no matter if it's a street car or race car, it in installs easier. It's just better all the way around. Spend the extra money. Get the extra kit. Um, you know, trust me. I learned the hard way. The other kit's junk. I got another kit over there right now that, I don't know, I may put 
hinges on my on my cow gate or something. I don't know, but uh, it ain't for a race car. So I'm gonna try to set these GoPros up uh, and get to it. So I'm gonna show you what I have cut with a sawzall and what I need another sawzall blade for because I was gonna use the four inch grinder instead, but this is not a race car. I mean, this is not um, Billy Bob's dirt track car uh, down the road. Uh, so we want this to be done right. And I think a four inch sawzall blade, I mean a four inch zip wheel, grinder cut off blade, disc, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, I think I'd end up nicking something in, I'm just not about that life. So give me just a second. I'll flip it around to show you what I'm talking about. All right, so I was able to cut, you know, the that bar and that bar, the mask and tape line bars with the Sawzall. I was able to cut that one with the Sawzall uh, and the four inch wheel because it's wide open and no, no worries about nicking anything or getting sparks on things because I prepared for that um this one here though yeah no nah, we're not going to cut that with a four inch wheel um it's too close i mean you get a four inch wheel and you got two inches between there and there i could probably do it i'm not taking the risk um so it is what it is uh i'm gonna get some sawzall blades and that'll pretty much make it where i can just reach in there yaw yaw that mug off and be done uh clean it up with a four inch flat wheel carefully uh and we'll go about our way on that i'll put some black paint on there uh be done with this location and this location same thing four inch flat wheel clean it up black paint done all right so i got the x brace cut out or the x bar as you can see i gotta come in here I'm gonna come right in here, all this weld. It looks like garbage. That's the old weld. We're gonna grind that off, try to make it look like it was never there. Same way here. I'm gonna try to grind all this off. Try to make it look like it was never there. It's gonna be pretty difficult down here, but uh, we're gonna get it done. So as you can see, I've took some of the protection off or pretty much all the protection off the car because uh, I'm done cutting for today. When I start welding, I'll put it all back. Um, but we got, here's the stubs that I left. I'm still gonna clean those up, but we'll slide the new kit when it comes here and there. And then here's where I cut off. Um, here's where I cut off and ground off the existing X, we don't need that no more. Get as smooth as possible. I mean, you can't do what you can do. Same here. I cut it off, ground it smooth. We're gonna clean it all up, put some nice paint on there. Um, make it look like it never was there. The stuff for the bottom, same thing. I'll clean all the edges up, sand that off good. Get my TIG water out, TIG it all the way around as far as I can. Uh, 
probably not going to be able to get all the way to the bottom, but we're going to give it our best shot. Dude, um, we're running into some hiccups here with the car. Uh, uh, with the Novid going around, you know, we hadn't uh, got our door bar kit like we should uh, because everybody's backed up. Normally things show up here from Summit next day, but it's going to be here today. Uh, so until then, when we get that late this evening, because that's when the truck runs, I'm going to do what I can because I'm not the type to just sit on my hands. So I'm going to show you guys a few things I thought about showing you because uh, well, that's what the videos are about. Uh, show you how I do things and you determine whether or not it's right or wrong. That's up to you. So here we go. All right. So what we got here is a 10 year old Lufkin tape, tape measure made right here in America. Cause that's what we do. Um, this is just something I like to do. You know, like we said earlier, we got a stub here and a stub here. We're going to um, measure the shortest stub, which I pretty much got, I got them pretty close, but we're gonna measure the shortest stub and we're gonna make them, we're gonna cut the longest one to match it. And we're gonna do that to both sides of the car. Uh, if, if I measure this stub right here and it's two inches and the rest of them are three, all three of the locations we're gonna cut to two inches because uh, we're not working on a Chinese go-kart here. Uh, this is a race car, this is a show car. This is a street car. We're not, we're not doing that. We're going to do it right. And if you choose not to do it right, or you have a different style car, or you're working on Uncle Billy Bob's dirt track car, uh, bomber class car, that's up to you. That's a okay with me. But for now, we're going to do what I like to do. And that's try to make everything as right as possible, whether it be right in, in my eyes or right in anybody else's eyes is what I think is right. So we're going to measure this one and cause I believe it's the shortest and we're going to make all the rest of them match it, square it up pretty and get it done. Tip here, something I feel like I need to say. Um, obviously these, these stubs are welded in an angle. Um, if you measure the top of this and the bottom of this, you're going to get two different measurements. The bottom is cut shorter than the top because it has to come at an angle, common sense. Measure from the center of the bar that it's attached to in both locations. Measure from the center. Uh, and the reason I say that is because these notches may be a little different, but the distance from the center to here won't change. The center of the pop is attached to, to the end of it. And that should get you really, really close. Uh, nobody at the car show is gonna pull them tape measure and measure them. So, you know, within an eighth of an inch, cool. Okay, so very important. This car's got a Lexan front windshield. Can't tell it by looking at it. Looks like a regular windshield, not. Those definitely cannot hold any, hold any kind of uh, hot debris. We cardboarded up the whole roof. We don't want anything in getting up there and hitting that headliner. Headliner can't handle that kind of crap. We don't want to put a headliner in this car. We want this car to go back to the owner better than it came. That's the whole point of doing stuff like this. All right, so like on the other side where I told you, I wasn't using the yellow to really square anything up um, or anything like that. Still not using it to square stuff up. Uh, using them mainly because <clears throat> I'm gonna use this as a mark to get my two and three quarter of inches. And that's what I got over there. That's why I made those two. And these are going to be two and three quarters inches. Also remember from the center of the attached tube. Don't measure from your notch because we're human and whoever put this cage in may not have made the notch exactly the same. Good chances are they did not. So I got all this stuff laid down. I'm going to cut and I'll be back in a second. This side over here seems to be a little closer to the floor. Um, I could get it with a four inch grinder, but I'm just not going to take the chance. Uh, here's a old Summit Racing cheap China uh, die grinder. Just going to use that to get the 
heavy stuff off and then I may take a four inch flat wheel and clean it up real quick, but not really wanting to, you know, dig into the floor or something because whoever put this cage in, put this bar here probably an inch lower than the driver's side. Uh, probably done it just to make my life more difficult. Uh, so we're gonna fix it. So I got them placed in there, uh, cleaned up, cleaned up, ready to weld. So all I did is put both ends on there as if you have an, as if you have an imaginary pipe right here between there. We're gonna measure from this line to this line as straight as possible. Um, I'd, I'd suggest measuring over maybe like an eighth of an inch or something, add an eighth of an inch and grind them back down so it'd fit up perfectly. I got the bar placed in there. I shaped it or grind it down because you got to keep in mind that just because you got on that hinge don't mean that your pinhole is going to line up if the bar is too long or short. So cut a little long, just keep grinding until your hole gets perfectly lined up. Uh, you don't want to have to fight these things to get them in and out because they can be a pain if they're not done right. Uh, I'm going to grind the ends down or clean them up. Come over here, tack them in place. Um, but first off with them, I'm going to get my angle gauge and I'm going to show you guys a trick. All right, so when you put these hinges in, if you don't make sure that the hinges are twisted correctly, if you got them way jacked up like, you know, like this, it's gonna come and bust your window out. I mean, it's kind of common sense, but it's stuff that you don't th really think about. Um, so you want to make an even sweep, even if you pull it up as high as you can, you don't want it busting your window out. So make an even sweep. You don't want to drop into the ground or you don't want it coming up. Once you find where you want it at, all this angle gauge is for is reference. Take your angle gauge, Put down here on your bottom hinge, find your number, uh, make a mental note or write it down. And when you get to the other side, make the bar set uh, the same or make the hinge the same angle. That way when they're swinging out, if they're both open at the same time, you don't want one up in the air, one down on the ground. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the welder. I'm gonna tack everything in place. I'm gonna take the bar out and weld it on the table. And then I'm gonna weld of the hinge to the car itself. three days later uh, the car turned out really good exactly like I expected it to turn out we got um, everything painted everything swings out evenly everything swings out and in easily pins easily uh, we didn't burn none of the interior parts we didn't scratch none of the outside, uh, exterior of the car uh, I'm gonna show you the finished result and we're done we made this side you got a pin here and here, the driver's side, instead of bolting it there, we put pins in both so the driver could take it out when he's driving around the street, throw it back in there easily on the track. Um, on the other side, a bolt in the bottom, pin in the top. Uh, everything cleaned up real nicely. I'm very proud of it. Mm -hmm.